Hi guys, I am Siddharthan. This is the seventh video in our Python basics module in the machine learning course with Python. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about loops in Python. Okay, so there are basically two important loops in Python. They are for loop and while loop. Okay, so in this video, we will see where we will be using loops and what is meant by this these loops. Okay, so before starting the video, if you want to learn data science, you can check out my hands on data science course with Python. I have given the link for my course in the description of this video. Okay, so getting started with today's video. First of all, let's understand about for loop. Okay, so so I'll give you an example of where this is used. So first of all, let me create a variable as laptop one. So in this laptop one variable, we want our user to type an input. Okay, so laptop one is equal to input. enter the price of the laptop okay so if i run this this will ask the input from the user so enter the price of the laptop so here we can uh, give some price let's say the price of the laptop is 20000 okay so this is how you can get input from the user using this input function okay so when you get input from a user it will consider this input as string so strings are nothing but text okay so we need to convert it to integer so even though it is an integer or it is a number so this input function will think that this input is a string so we need to convert it by putting this int keyword here so this will convert this string into an integer okay so i'll run this again now it will be considered as an integer okay so now what i'll do is let's say that we want to get the price for five laptops okay so for that what we will be doing so we will type this lines five times right so laptop one so i have pasted it five times so i'll change this variable to laptop two laptop three laptop four and laptop five so when i run this so it will ask for the price of the laptop let's say again it's twenty thousand for the first laptop and there is another laptop and the price of that laptop is 30,000 and next it's let's say 40,000 and 50,000 okay and the fifth laptop will be let's say it's 60,000 okay so this is how you can get price of five laptops right so with this data you can add all those prices and tell the user that what is the total price of the five laptops right so this is how we can get five inputs but you can look the code here this is not an efficient way to write a code so in this i have just repeated the same line of code again and again except this change in the variable name right so in this case only we will use loops so loop is used to repeat a certain action again and again okay let's see how we can use loop to do this same action so we want to uh, ask input from the user five times about the price of the laptop but we want to do it in a concise way in a short way okay so for this purpose of reducing the size of the code we can use loops and to repeat the same action again and again okay so for this i can use the for loop as for i in range five okay so laptop then we put as laptop price so laptop price is input so again you can just copy this here so i'll explain you about the syntax in a minute okay so just wait a minute okay so what i have done here is okay so this is the syntax for for loop so we will use this keyword for and i is a variable so for i in range 5 so range 5 means it's nothing but uh, 0 1 2 3 and 4 so in python indexing starts from 0 as i have told you in the previous videos so it starts from 0 so 5 means 5 numbers so the 5 numbers are 0 1 2 3 4 okay so totally we have 5 numbers okay so this will count 5 times and i takes the value of these five numbers okay so when it runs this loop for the first time it will take the value of zero 
and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So totally we have 5 times our loop running. Okay. So if I run this, okay. So it is not defined. So I should just made some spelling mistake. So it is int. Okay. So I'll run this. So now we can enter the price of the laptop in the same way as we did. So let me put 20,000 again. 30,000. 40,000. 50,000 and 60,000. So now you can see here in the previous uh, piece of code we have did the same action in five lines of code but here we have did that in a in two lines of code. So this is the uh, advantage and use of loops. So we can do the same thing again and again and it will reduce the size of our code and it will be a very efficient way to do that so this is the syntax so we will use this for i in range so instead of i you can use uh, j or anything like that so this is just a variable name so this in is, rep is important okay so what happens is for i in 5 so when this loop runs for the first time this i will take the value of 0 okay so 5 means these uh, 5 values which are 0 1 2 3 4 so this basically counts the number of times the loop is running okay so for zero in range five so the first time this code will run okay and uh, this first line will be printed once we have given the price of the laptop so this will again go to the start now this i will take the value of one and again this loop will be uh, performed so again this third second line will be printed and when i give the value for this particular line it again goes to the top of the loop and now i will take the value of two and this continues as long as it gets the first five values so that is why I'm, uh, I'm mentioning the value as five okay so if i put uh, something like seven here so if i run this so it will ask us for seven uh, values so let's say the price of the laptop is 3k so it's 3000 okay so let me put as three just consider it's 3000 four five six seven okay so I just typed the enter so that's the problem so let me run it again quickly six seven eight nine two three four okay so as you can see here it has printed this seven times so that is the use of this particular range okay so when you give seven so it will take the values as zero one two three four five and six okay so this particular number will be excluded because the number is starting from zero so this is the use of loops and this is how you can use loops okay so there is another uh, way of using this okay so i hope every one of you is familiar with list okay so let me create a number list so I create the list named as numbers and it contains the numbers as 50 100 Okay, 50, 100, 150, and 200. So, this list contains four values 50, 100, 150, and 200. Now, what I want to do is print these individual elements. So, for that, you what you can do is you can put this print function and you can mention the name of the list, which is numbers, and inside that, you can mention the index values. Okay, so I'll just copy this. So I want to print all these four numbers so one two three okay so because indexing starts from zero as i have told you earlier so index of 50 is zero 100 is one 150 is two and 200 is three so let me run this this will print the individual elements okay as you can see here so instead of doing this what we can do is use a for loop similarly as we did in the previous case and print these individual numbers okay so this is the list we have and now what we can do is use a for loop like for i in numbers so this for and in are the two important keywords for for loop so for i in numbers print i okay so as you can see here so we have this list which contains four elements so what happens when we run this for loop is so when the loop runs for the first time this i will take the first value which is 50 and it goes inside this loop so inside this we have one statement which is to print i so for the first time the value of i is 50 so once this i is completed it will take the second value okay and now it will print the second value which is 100 and 150 and 200 so this is how loops work okay
now let's discuss about the second important loop which is for while loop so we have discussed about for loop and now we will discuss about while loop okay now what is the difference between for loop and while loop so you can see in this case so in this case we know that we want to print this uh, lines seven times right so before we know that we have to print that five times so in this we are pr uh, printing it seven times so there will be cases in our program or in our code that we may not be sure how many times we want to run a particular statement so in, in that particular cases we can use while loops but when we are using a for loop we should mention the number of times we want to print a function okay so that is the difference between while loop when you are not sure about the number of times an action has to be executed so this is how you can create a while loop so you need to initiate value for i so it can be any uh, variable so i will use i is equal to 0 and while i is less than 10 okay so while i is less than 10 i want to print i so let me explain you in a minute what this code does okay so what i'm doing is so this is I, i'll just put the syntax of while loop here so it's while condition while if the condition so there is a condition here okay so this is the while loop while loop condition sorry syntax okay so so we will include this while keyword and there will be a condition if this condition is true then this statement will be carried out okay so in this case you can see here so we have this while keyword and then we have a condition which is i is less than 10 okay so if this condition is satisfied this uh, program will go into this statement okay so you can see the indentation here so you can see the indentation in the case of for loop also so that means this particular statement is inside the loop okay so basically what we are doing is first of all we are initiating i is equal to 0 and we are checking the condition i is less than 10 so as long as i is less than 10 this loop will be carried out again and again okay so first of all i will take the value of 0 now it will check the condition so i is less than 10 so we have the value of i is 0 so 0 is of course less than 10 so the condition is true and now this will be carried out so i will be printed then we are incrementing i with 1 so this basically means so what this basically means is i is equal to i plus 1 so the short form for writing this particular line is i plus is equal to 1 so this these two are the same things okay so i just delete here so what happens once i is printed so it will be added with one so now the value of i will be one right and now it will again check the condition now one is again less than 10 so it will print uh, i which is one now and again it will be incremented so this process will uh, continue as long as i value is less than 10 so let's print this as you can see here so 0 1 2 3 so this will print i up to 9 because so if we have made the condition as i is less than or equal to 10 we will get a 10 right so that's why it has printed up to 9 only okay so this is how you can use while loop when you are not sure how many times the loop should run okay but in the case of for loop we will mention the number of times you want to run a particular action again and again okay so this is one case where you can use while loop okay so as i have told you if this condition is true only this while loop will be uh, carried out so let's see what happens if the condition is not true so i is equal to 5 while i is less than 3 print i and is equal to 1 so i'll run this so nothing will happen as you can see here it just executed but we i is not printed because this condition is not true so you can see here i is equal to 5 so here the condition is i should be less than 3 but i is of course greater than 3 right so this condition returns a false value and hence uh, in the program won't go into this while condition in this while loop okay so that is why we won't get any output so this while loop will be skipped so when this condition is true as in this case 
we will be uh, you know the statements inside this uh, loop will be printed whereas when the condition is false the statement inside the loop won't be printed okay so this is about while loop so the important thing you that you need to know between for and while is so in for loops we know the number of times the code has to be uh, repeated again and again but we can use while loops when we are not sure how many times the code should be repeated so in these cases i have just made some very simple very basic examples so that you can understand and when we do various uh, projects and other programs in python so it will be very complicated very uh, complicated and complex loops will be used okay so this is for your basic understanding so i hope you understood the basic function of for and while loops in this video so i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching